Hello everyone, George here, and in this video, unfortunately, uh, this is a second video trying to show you how to fix the doors. I ran into an issue where my capture software uh, lost everything I had done, but luckily I think I've been able to remember, as well as uh, keep some comments in my code that indicated where we were before I lost everything. So let's go ahead and talk about how the doors should be fixed, uh, if you're following along. So the first thing to note is if we select the door, you'll notice the pivot point of the door is not at the base of the door, nor at the top. It's at the center. And that does pose a tiny bit of a problem to us. The second problem is, if you were following along, you would still have had attached to both doors the, uh, the usable security door button component, which would be throwing an error down here in the console. Um, most likely that's been happening, but because it's not critical to anything, and because it didn't actually have a transform that it was attached to, it was just running and just, just, just failing every single time, but still the game itself was, was alive. That means make sure you delete those components. The next thing is we need to go into the usable security door button. Now once inside, there are a few changes I had to make. Now I luckily kept a comment from what the old code looked like, and this is what was going to be on your end. But in that case, I was using simply a for loop, and I was looking at basically, um, I had a quantity called a mount, which was set to the door height, which I still retain even now. So the idea is that I have the door height in closed door, and I'm going to continue until that amount is either zero or less than zero. And I'm going to slowly be decrementing that over time. For loops are fine for this sort of thing, but I ended up just switching to a while loop because that's just how my brain is working at the moment. Next up, we have a door.position is equal to a new vector, door.position x, amount, door.position z. So the first big problem we had was the fact that we were using the door.position x and the door.position z. We should be using the local positions of these objects because they are parented to other objects in our scene. I mean, this door is, is part of this larger group called door frame, which is part of the security room itself, which is technically part of the entire building. And by using the, the world transforms, the door was actually behaving improperly. Other than that, basically what I ended up doing was uh, all the everything else is the same. Um, the only difference is uh, the start method, I have a original position, I store where the door originally was. Uh, the idea is that the original position is equal to the closed position. Uh, then I went ahead and transformed or translated the door vertically up by whatever the door height is. So the doors do start open and not close, which was a problem from before. And the last thing I do is of course set our Boolean value, or excuse me, and the last thing I do is set our Boolean value to be equal to true. And the last thing I do is set our Boolean value to be equal to true because the door now is open. Now in closed door, we of course now have, same thing as before, float amount is equal to door height. Now we have a while loop just because at this moment while loops just in my brain make more sense than a for loop. It's the same thing, it's really no different. Um, amount minus equals whatever the door speed times the time dot delta time, which is the exact same thing we had down here. But now I'm of course creating a new vector and the door's local position is being updated by the original position dot y, which is where it was originally, plus the amount that the door was up vertically. So the idea is where was the door originally? Add to that the amount that we're currently up. And since we're constantly removing from amount, the door is going to go down further and further and further and further until we're done. For the open door, the exact same opposite was done. Instead of starting with an amount equal to door height, we start with the amount equal to zero because it is closed. And then while the amount is less than the door height, meaning uh, the amount will continue to grow until it hits that door height or beyond, then we go ahead and increment door height based upon our speed as well as the time. And then we're going to update our door's local position with a new vector three, where uh, the original position, which is a value incrementing from zero with the original position, remember that's closed, plus the amount, and since amount is increasing, it's growing towards that door height, the door will then rise upwards. And finally, we of course do a yield return null, so that uh, on the next frame that we're processing, we'll once again execute this. And then the last thing we do is because we, it's potential, it, because it's incredibly likely actually that we're going to exceed the uh, actual door height, we just make sure we clamp that value to the door height at the end. And then we just set our door in use is equal to false and our door open is equal to true. The next step though that we're going to want to deal with is actually making the usable security doors have a power drain. So the first thing we need to do is instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we want to inherit now from powered. So there's powered right there. We're going to get that error. We're going to click over here and we're going to implement that abstract method. And if we scroll on down there, we have our on power outage method. Go ahead and delete the throwing of the new error. Now on a power outage, what's gonna happen is the door, if it's open, needs to be closed. 
uh, and we also need to make it so we can no longer call these scripts in the future. Um, so let's go ahead and do that really quick. So we need to do a check if the uh, door open is equal to, oh, actually, I don't need to do that. So let's just do if door open. Let's go ahead and call the coroutine door close. So the next thing we're going to want to do is make sure the user cannot continue to use this object. That is, the object has been deactivated. So after the coroutine has, it continues to fire, remember the coroutine is not the update function. The coroutine is going to fire and continue to exist even if this script is deactivated. So what we're going to want to do, of course, is deactivate the script. So let's go ahead and do a uh, uh, this dot enabled is equal to false. So now this script is disabled. So in use, what we're going to want to do is, of course, make sure that we are enabled. So let's do and uh, this dot enabled. Okay, so if our power is out, we start the coroutine to close the door. We disable ourselves immediately. When we try to use the use method, which is going to be called by the use manager, what happens is we check to see if the door is not in use and whether or not this component is actually enabled. And there, then we're allowed to actually manipulate the door itself. So let's go ahead and save this. Uh, the next thing we want to do, though, is we want to, when the door is closed, we want to continue, actually, I'm sorry, I did the wrong coroutine. This should be open door. The doors are opened when power goes out. So when the door is closed, we want to continually drain power. And then when this ends, we are going to uh, relinquish that power. So let's do power manager dot, dot instance dot use power. And we're going to pass ourselves this into that method. Uh, we do need to set up our wattage, which we haven't done yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So in the start method, let's set our wattage is going to be equal to, um, once again, we have these obscenely high at the moment just for testing purposes, but we'll set it to 10 just so it, it finishes everything off pretty quick. Let's go over to uh, open, let's see, closed door. And in closed door, uh, power manager is using this object. And then when we finish, we are going to want to down here, when we're all done, uh, when the door is open and everything else, we're going to want to do another call to power manager. But instead, we're going to do um, release power. And that should be it. So let's go ahead back into our scene, find out if there are any errors. Nothing's popping up at the moment. Let's go ahead and hit run. And there's our two doors open at the moment. Let's click over here on our camera, rotate this to the side, and close that door. Our power usage is... Uh, Oh, actually, so the door is closed now, but it stopped. Oh, that is an issue. So I'm sorry, we should not be calling uh, release power here. Release power uh, isn't just happening while the door is moving, it's happening while the door is always down. So on the door open command is when we should actually be calling power manager dot instance dot release power. Okay, make that little change, hit run again, rotate, whoops, rotate to the side. Click that door. Here our power drain is going on quite incredibly. Almost down to nothing now. And boom. Oh, there's a problem. So that door actually opened up. So let's take a look at that really quick. So, well, actually that should have happened. That's exactly what should have happened. The one door we were working with, however, did not open up. So that's a problem. Let's figure out what's going on there. So on power outage, if door open, well, that's wrong. It should be if door closed, right? Because if the door is closed, then we want to open it. I'm sorry. If door opened, if door opened uh, is equal to false. So if it's closed, then open the door. Now let's give that another go. Hit run, rotate our head, click that. Wait for the power to drain. Let's turn a light on as well. Make the power drain even faster. Boom. That one opened up. And uh, we should no longer be able to control either of these elements, which is working correctly. Come over here. And neither of them function either. Great. So there we are. So we fixed our doors so they actually open properly again. And we, of course, um, just fixed power usage. And of course, we just added the ability for the doors to use power and then fail properly when a power outage is detected by the system. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.